an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes out now I'm going to be playing Erica saying exactly what happened when he ran her over with that same SUV with his punk fucking ass. He tried to kill her. He literally tried to kill her. You guys. Nobody fucking deserves what the fuck he did to Erica. Nobody deserves that. And she doesn't she didn't deserve that shit either. Now let's listen to what she has to say. So I got me a room all night. He was talking, shit, calling me, talking, shit, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then the next day, when it's almost checkout, he came there and knocked on the freaking door, took my phone, punched me in my face. I ran down the street. He kept following me. And then we went to the gas station, the BP gas station. They have a video of this, of what he did to me. It's a video. It got recorded. He punched me again. I was bleeding at work. I still have the backpack and the damn shoes that he ran me over in. And um, he, uh, after he punched me, I walked away. I would never expect him to run me over. I walked away, and he ran me the f over. Wow. That's a little fucking possessive, isn't it? Bitch boy, Brooks, you didn't deserve Erica. And she didn't deserve to get treated like shit by you. You are such a fucking pig, BBB. A fucking lowlife. A dirtbag. A good-for-nothing son of a bitch. Okay, so that was the initial charges after Bitch Boy Brooks 
punched Erica in the face, splitting her lip and busting her eye. And him running her over and him running into his mom's house when the cops were trying to arrest him. Next is going to be the intimidation of a witness and those charges, uh, the criminal complaint for those charges. What was just played was the criminal complaint for the initial charges. So, let's read. The next one is longer.
all those threats and the way he talked to her on the phone and was trying to make her uh, say that he didn't do it, that she fell in front of the vehicle, bullshit. And then you threatened her life. You literally threatened her life, bitch boy. You told her that all your little N-words are gonna listen to whatever you tell them to do and all this bullshit. You are so fucking disgusting. You are no kind of fucking man. You're a worthless piece of shit. You are a son of a bitch, literally. And your mom... She knew everything that was going on, which I think we all pretty much assume that one. But this is evidence to prove that your mom knew exactly what the fuck you were doing to Erica. And I just, I can't fucking stand you and this made me fucking hate you even more. Mr. Rakestraw, you don't wish to wait for Mr. Hampton? No, we'll be okay. I All spoke right. with Mr. Hampton. He's fine with me taking, this, okay. taking care of this. State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 4596 and 21 CF 5020. Appearances, please. Matthew Torbinson and Shelly Grasso appear for the state. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Daryl Brooks appears by Attorney William Rakestraw, who appears as co-counsel with Attorney Robert Hampton, who is not here at this time, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Mr. Brooks. Good afternoon, Your Honor. All right, so we are here for a status. The last time um, the case was in court, uh, it was handled by Judge Feist for us. We were in the middle of a trial, um, and there were some movement issues. So. Judge Feist handled it for us at that time. It was set for a final pretrial. He adjourned the jury trial uh, that was scheduled for December 12th and set it at the request of the parties for a status on today's date. Uh, Mr. Rakestraw, what can you tell me about that status and where we stand today? Yes, Your Honor. Um, having spoke with Mr. Brooks, um, we have reached out to uh, Attorney Torbison to ask for a separate offer on this matter. It's my understanding that Attorney Torbison is gonna get that to me uh, forthwith. Um, Your Honor, me and Mr. Uh, Brooks have also discussed the possibility that Mr. Brooks um, will possibly be asking to proceed pro se if this case goes to trial, but we can table that for the time being um, as we are still seeking a possible resolution. Um, Your Honor, I would um, ask for one more, I would ask for another status date so that we can work forward, hopefully, and obtain a resolution on this matter. Okay, state. Attorney Rakestraw and I discussed the parameters of an amended offer out in the hallway. I've emailed him an amended offer that involves just the two cases before your honor. I agree with uh, the record made by Attorney Rakestraw in terms of how we proceed on this matter. All right, just so we're clear, what I'm taking you to say is that you are looking for an offer that handles the two cases that are scheduled before me, separate from the case that is scheduled before Judge Feist, correct? That is correct, your honor. So not separate offers on everything? No. Okay. Um, all right, so it sounds like the parties are still negotiating. Uh, do you wish to do another status? Yes, please. All right, uh, we did have an opportunity to speak before. Okay, this should be fine. Um, we had an opportunity to speak before we called the case on the record when you first came over, uh, Mr. Rakestraw, with Mr. Torbenson and Ms. Grasso, and you indicated that the case in Judge Feist was scheduled for a status on uh, March 23rd. That's correct. It's my understanding that Mr. Brooks has a requested to appear in person for each hearing. So you want him produced for that? Yes, please. All right, we can put it on for that same date. Uh, we have trials scheduled on March 22nd, but we'll figure it out um, to be able to make this happen. Sure. What time on the 23rd? Uh, that was set for 1.30. You want the same time or do you want two o'clock? Uh, or? Probably just, I mean, we should probably just do two o'clock, just make it easier, make it cleaner. And as far as that issue, the request to uh, proceed pro se, I think that probably 
Um, it sounds as if you are negotiating actively on his behalf and he's not requesting this at this point, but only if it goes to trial. So we will, uh, I will withhold any argument or uh, any further action on that decision at this time. Understood, Your Honor. The next court date is March 23rd at two o'clock for status. Thank you. This fucking worthless piece of shit, I cannot fucking stand him. And now he's saying if he has to go to trial, he's going to uh, do it pro se. He ended up after this firing these attorneys and getting new ones. And then he's saying he's going to uh, do it pro se if the prosecution doesn't agree to a, um, to a certain sentence. Dude, you're in prison for the rest of your fucking life. Who gives a fuck how much time you get? But you should get a life sentence for spending the last 16 years tormenting Erica, you worthless piece of fucking shit. Is that your desire, sir? Yeah. Daryl Brooks took his insanity defense off the table Friday. I, I have my own reasons why. And didn't explain further. The Waukesha Christmas Parade defendant was in court for a jury status, but not for long. I just want to ensure this is not a delay tactic, to be very blunt with the court. Because of an infected tooth. To your knowledge, is the tooth abscess being addressed appropriately by the jail? I was informed that uh, it's been diagnosed as a tooth abscess. Friday's hearing was to get details in order ahead of the October trial, like what evidence can be presented, such as his criminal history, types of questions attorneys can ask jurors, and how and where jurors can view evidence, like the SUV that went through the parade route. Put your hands off me. The delay Friday comes after Brooks had an outburst in court last month, where he was removed from the courtroom. Brooks is charged with more than 80 counts connected to the incident in Waukesha back in November 2021, including six counts of first-degree intentional homicide. I understand what the state is saying. Judge Jennifer Doro agreed to push the hearing back. An abscess? You have an abscess tooth or you had abscess? Listen, I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't trust anything you say at all, bitch boy. I believe, and and I, I just I believe that you you were fucking faking. You can go to the damn dentist and say, "Oh, it hurts, it hurts so bad," and they'll just say, "Oh, it's an abscess," without actually doing much. So I don't believe a damn word you say, and I think it was a delay tactic, and I think that the court thought it was too, but she didn't voice her opinion because it was her opinion. And obviously I'm not sure on that. That's just my opinion, but whatever. I wish that abscess would have spread to your freaking so-called brain. His mother, Dawn Woods, about how she felt about today's verdict. Her son found guilty on all counts. Do I think it's fair? No. You know, you know, I don't know why they couldn't go into concurrent sessions. Still, just he would not live six life sentences. What do you think he should have gotten? I don't know. What he they just say he deliberately killed those people. He did not deliberately kill those people. It hurts more than anything. What do you think he's thinking? Have you talked to him? I did, did but him? I won't share. Okay. Did you talk to him yesterday? No, he called me today mm -hmm. after he got out of court. We okay. talked briefly. We also discussed how she plans to move forward now that she'll only see her son behind bars. Hopefully someone, this will bring awareness to mental illness via our senators and our governors and elected officials, court, police. Very little help is done for individuals who are incarcerated with mental illness. How do you feel right now? Right now, I just want to curl up and die. That's how I feel right now. I just want to go somewhere, just call up, but I can't. 
as long as my child is alive, I have to stay alive. You say you hope that this brings awareness to mental health. Um, I can tell you, I know people that have been incarcerated and in prison, and they do help with mental health issues. And he will get the help he needs. I'm so happy over that, that he's in there for the rest of his fucking life. And whatever about you crying, Mrs. Donwood's enabler, you obviously tried to help get Erica to recant what happened to her when she got ran over. I don't feel sorry for you. I'm empathetic because you're a mother without your child. And this was your only child left. But I don't feel sorry for you at all. You dropped the ball. You say he fell through the cracks. You dropped the ball on that. If he would have gotten the help when he was younger, maybe he wouldn't have turned out to be such an evil, vile, piece of shit, son of a bitch, good for nothing, bitch boy. But you have to take the blame for that also. I'm changing who I am. I'm making a new plan. Rearranging my life and I won't look back ever again. Yeah. You ain't see me activated. You better hope that you never see me 